develop your own style. Don't be too heavily influenced on what other people are doing or what you're seeing out there in the world. Go out and try to create what you want to create. It's sort of developed over, over a number of years, the colour palette. It's more, it was influence of other photographers that I was seeing, but it was also largely I, basically the colours that I wanted people to see when, when I was sort of capturing something. So in the last couple of years especially, I've really honed in on that, that craft of colour correction and, and all my tones in particular that I use. I think it's, it's largely about, yeah, me translating the colours that I see when I, when I capture the photo. They may not necessarily be largely accurate as to what the exact colours are happening, but it's, it's kind of my interpretation of what I want to see. It's great when you can be recognised, especially for having a particular style or tones in your, in your work, and I think that's something you sort of hone in on eventually. Yeah, I have like a lot of, lot of close friends now in photography. I, I didn't so much when I first started out. I was largely rolling by myself because there wasn't, I didn't, wasn't a whole lot of social media use and stuff in my sort of teenage years. And that was sort of just me going out and shooting primarily by myself. Um, but nowadays, yeah, there's a whole lot of people, like a whole network of photographers that I interact with, like on Instagram and online that, yeah, that sort of influence the stuff I do. I'm definitely like inspired by the work of a lot of people around me. I guess the social media presence is quite important. At the end of the day, it's not where I put, like, I put, I direct all my attention. I don't like to direct all my attention into social media as much. It's a good outlet for being able to showcase your work and like connect with other people who are doing similar things. But for me, it's not the be all and end all. And I think it's, it's largely just showcasing what I do and just letting people know. And then it's not too business focused, I guess. It's more just promoting myself. So the past three years, three or so years, we've, we've had opportunity and like we've gone from strength to strength. I, I wouldn't be where I am today without these guys, basically. It's so great having people like that behind you with, in the business sense, because we're, we're all sort of a team and we feed off each other, we work with each other. The best like sort of inspiration for me to keep doing better at what I do. Drone photography is like, it's been a pretty big aspect of our business for a while. We've lost a few in our time, but like, yeah, they're a great tool, obviously, for like, to add to the, the filming we usually do. The drones add like a whole new perspective and that seemed exciting to us at the time and it still is. As everyone would have seen, this, this is so accessible now. You like, anyone really can go out and shoot all that stuff and it's not all that difficult to get an epic looking shot with the drone. Um, so it, it largely comes down to, I guess, like the grading of the final shot and then, yeah, just the location. <laughs> Obviously when you're starting out in the game, you've got to start from somewhere and that, that basically somewhere is, is working for free and getting your foot in the door and getting your name out there and getting established. But yeah, there certainly comes a point when, yeah, I think like I valued my work enough to say I should be getting paid for it. I do and then it's, it's, it's not an easy transition but you've got to value, you've got to back yourself at the end of the day and you've got to yep. realise the value of your own work. Yeah. So at the start I was, I was largely going out and contacting people and trying to get yeah, my foot in the door wherever I could um, and yeah you do the free stuff and you get the old exposure, we'll give you this much exposure for this job, it's not paid and everything but um, you obviously realise that's a bit worthless after a while. <laughs> A few years ago I started getting a few travelling offers to go places. These were minimal costs basically though, so they would be, they'd pay your accommodation and your, air, and your air flights maybe, and that was sort of it, and then you'd provide the product for free. Whereas though now, like I, I'll get paid on top of that with the, obviously the perks of the job, and then yeah, it allows me to travel, and then when I'm travelling as well, I'm able to shoot my own content, which is a bonus at the end of the day, which I can show people. It's great when like, the. I've been lucky enough in my career to be able to work with a lot of brands that have taken me to a, a number of countries and a number of places which have allowed me, I guess, enough time to do the job but on the side being able to shoot my own content and stuff that I can show, like, show people from where I've been. So I guess I've been quite lucky in that respect but I, I still love to have the time to be able to shoot and explore a place at the same time as getting the work done there. <laughs> I do a whole range of jobs. I'd, I've never really pigeonholed myself into one category of photography. I've always been quite interested in, in the broader field and just basically attempting anything that I can. And I like to work on things that I'm passionate about, I guess. So if I'm invested in something, I'm 
I'm shooting it, it means that I want the product to do well or whatever. And uh, yeah, I've got to be into it to be able to, to shoot it, I guess. So yeah, it's largely job by job based on what comes through. The job does need to appeal to me in some aspects. I think that's quite important. Um, I'm able to shoot my best when I'm, yeah, when I'm invested or I'm passionate about something. I think my work really shines through. So I think that's quite important for me to be able to do that. My best advice would be for anyone that wants to look into the industry or, or look at getting into the industry would be to develop your own style. Don't be too heavily influenced on what other people are doing or what you're seeing out there in the world. Go out and try to capture your own stuff and create what you want to create. I think people will, will recognise that over time and eventually you will start getting recognised for the work you're actually doing rather than just fitting into the mould of what everyone else is doing. So I say go out there and make yourself an individual in the field and really focus on your own craft.